right click and create a standard torus. I'll zoom in a bit. Select the entire object, go to face selection, right click and inset, just inset it a bit. The exact amount doesn't matter. Right click and collapse. Switch to edge selection mode, go to select, inverse and hit delete and that removes the original uh, lines of the geometry and you're left with these diagonal lines. Still in edge mode, select one of these diagonal lines, press G until these extend all the way around the object and then L for loop and keep pressing loop until they run round and so you've got all the diagonal lines running in one direction all the way around and the other half of them are not selected. Right click now and bevel that to the maximum extent. Right click again and choose extrude and normal. Hold the control key down and extrude 0.3. Left click to set that. Right, you can see the geometry graph here and that's going to be useful. If you haven't got the geometry graph, go to window and click on geometry graph. Okay, what I'm going to do now is right click and shell extrude and normal and I'm going to take that out and a smaller amount. So I can enter that tab 0.05 and then I'll press the plus key to extend the selection of the faces and right click again, extrude, normal and I'll press tab again and I'll do that 0.03 and enter that. Now select the entire object option, that's the body. Right click and combine all those into one object. Now I'm just moving the view around so you can see. If I just deselect that a moment and hide the middle bit, you can see that the inner lines here, these inner lines and inner faces, are still available and that's going to be useful when it comes to welding. Right, hide the outer and bring back the inner. I'm going to work on this now. Edge selection tool, select one of these little inner edges here just that and then go to select edge loop every nth ring nths enter 4 go OK and then press I for identical and uh, if you find that just every other one selected just press space to deselect that and then select a different one and then go select edge loop every nth ring every nth select 4 go OK and then go I for identical and hopefully at some point you'll get in a position where you've got every fourth one selected. So it just depends what your starting point is as to how well that works and if you've just changed your starting point if it doesn't work out for you. Okay, stay on the edge selection tool but extend the selection by clicking on it once more or pressing plus. So you can click on that and it extends the selection. Then go to face and you can see you've got every other one of these teeth selected now. Hit delete. Now uh, this is going to break the geometry somewhat so what you need to do now is go to the um, vertex selection mode and press C to connect that geometry back up so that will tidy things up. Now you can bring back the bit that was hidden select the entire two bits right click and weld them together so now that's welded those in and if I turn this round a bit you can see in here where the welds have taken place so it's just a matter of uh, sorting the shape out now we can smooth it down so press S S and you can keep going until you've got it as smooth as you want it to be. So I've press S once more. You can see the progress of the smoothing. That's probably about the limit before it's, it's getting a little bit too complex. If you want to shift your viewpoint, for example, just for example, supposing uh, you want it to focus more on this area, so you select that face, press A, and that'll move the viewpoint round. So that face now becomes a central selection. So you can have a look at that area of the shape. I just thought that was an interesting and useful sort of feature to uh, to uh, expose there, which I, I don't think I've ever mentioned it before, I don't know, probably have. Anyway, that just that's the shape. I don't know what to call it, it's just sort of a shape made from a torus and I thought it looked rather nice, so there you go. That's the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting and that you'll have a go at making something like this in Wings 3D. If you want to render this in, say, Bryce, for example, or Octane, or Da Studio, you can export these shapes here. So there's File, Export, and I usually export as uh, OBJ format. So, it's, you know, uh, give it a name. And uh, you'll find there's a progress bar on the bottom here once it's entered in. Um, it's probably being hidden at the moment because I'm running Camtasia Studio to record this. Uh, so uh, Wings will say it's not responding, and then it, it should eventually export the file and then you can uh, then you can do something like in another application. I suppose if I was going to complete my explanation, I know I said it was the end of the video, but uh, while we're at it, I'll, I'll launch uh, UV Mapper Classic, uh, which is a little free bit of software here. And so once this is fully exported, which shouldn't take too long, I hope. So it's still right in that file. Come on, wings.
come back. Okay, once that's done, then you can drop it into UV Mapper and use it to create a UV map. Although it is taking a worryingly long time now. What are we up to? 17 megabytes on the file size. Oh, it's done. Okay, so final file size, 18 megabytes. So in here, just drag and drop your file or go to file and open it. It'll take a little moment to load it in. As you can see, it'll tell you a little bit about it. Then it'll say there's no UV map. They could edit new UV map. So I'll do a spherical map. And y axis, that makes sense because uh, of the way it was orientated originally. I'll scale the results so it fits inside. And then it'll create a UV map which for some uh, applications, Octane, uh, possibly Dust Studio, is required to get the materials to look right, so to get them to map onto the surface properly. So just uh, save the model, just OK with whatever's there, and then select. I'm going to overwrite the original file. It'll say it exists, that's not a problem. And then it'll create a UV map for that when you load it into another piece of software. So there you go. That really is the end of the video now. Cheers.